Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this video, do make sure to like and subscribe and come hang out with us in Discord. Hey guys, it's Gene, and welcome to the Week 2 MVP video. First of all, I wanted to say thank you for all of the support on last week's video. It was great seeing so many people watch the video and then go and vote in the polls, so please continue to make your voice heard. And give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't. But. I also want to give a big congratulations to our Week 1 Server MVP, Bramblegast, the deserving winner in my opinion. Congratulations, and I hope everyone is enjoying using the emoji in our server. So please continue to vote for the Week 2 winner here as I take you through our nominees. And the first one from Peach League is Bubble07, great nickname, the Inteleon. And here we're in the early game, pretty much both teams have traded hazards at this point but Inteleon's had enough and it just picks up a kill with a snipe shot. Now I'm going to jump ahead and show you what it does for the rest of the match. Alright, and now we've jumped ahead here to turn 16, and Inteleon's side is down 3-4, to four, but Inteleon comes in for the revenge kill. So it lives in e-speed pretty easily and is able to pick up the kill with snipe shot for two kills. Then Sneasler comes in, and it's revealed that Inteleon is Scarf, so that's a third kill. Then comes Flygon, and this scares Inteleon out into Screamtail, um, which is immune to Dragon Claw. But then he goes Terra Ground Earthquake to get the kill there. But losing its Dragon Typing means Inteleon can come in and pick up another kill with Snipe Shot. And... Here comes the fifth and final kill that Inteleon gets. It clicks Terra Water and picks up the kill on Tauros. That is five out of six kills for Inteleon. A great nominee to get things started. Next up, we have the Beauty League. And we have Akiram Black here, who's up 1v4 versus Marshadow, the scariest mon on the server. And the thing about Marshadow is it's already revealed Spectral Thief which is an attack that can steal Kiram's boosts if it wants to go for a Dragon Dance sweep. So it's in a really dangerous spot here. But let's let it play out here, as he actually does force the switch and he makes the bold prediction, clicks Dragon Dance, gets a substitute up on the Glow King, who goes for a Future Sight, and it reveals it's probably loaded dice here, and so it gets the kill onto Slow King, lowering its defense and raising its speed yet again. In comes in the Swampert, and he gets another scale shot off, and it's enough to knock out the Swampert as well, lowering its defense, raising its speed. That Future Sight does land, knocking out its substitute, and in comes Marshadow, the moment of truth, but it outspeeds after all of these boosts, and is able to take down the Marshadow, and then all that stands in its way is a Persian, and it's able to take that out with one last scale shot, and with that, Kiram Black completes the sweep and turns it around from being down 1-4 to win the match. Here in the Brain League, we've got Carl, the Chien Pao, and it's actually a really cool matchup. It's a Sun Team versus a Psychic Terrain Expanding Force Team, but Carl is just going to take it over and dominate on his own. So as you can see, he's able to two-hit KO the Rotom here, and he's going to come back in later in the match, I'll skip to it, and just completely wipe out the opposition. So he already has one kill, let's see how many he ends up with. And now here on turn 14, it is 4 to 5, Carl's team is actually down one, but he's going to come in to revenge kill here, and he gets the Ice Spinner kill, which also ends the terrain. Then he's forced to switch out, he sacks the Nine Tails to get the sun up, um, but actually... Ninetales is able to outspeed and do a great deal of damage here, which just becomes really important because it no longer stops Carl. And Carl's able to come back in, hit that Sacred Sword through the defense boost, and get his third kill of the match. And Samurott comes in, and it's actually able to live one, um, but he just flip turns out, and Carl survives. And there's a defense boost, but again, Sacred Sword doesn't care. Another kill. And that's four for Carl. And indeed he comes in. And Sacred Sword. Another kill. That's five. And at this point, all that's left is a weakened Samurott. And Carl gets all six kills. Great job from Chi and Pao here. What a threat. And what a great nominee from the Brain League. Now we're in the Muscle League here with the Mega Gardevoir Curious. And as you can see, 
we're in turn seven now, and it's up against a Mega Deancey, which has already gone for a Rock Polish. And they're down one Pokemon. Let's see how it turns this around. It actually forces a switch into Weezing, which does not like a Hyper Voice at all, and that's a clean two-hit KO for Gardevoir's first kill of the match. And then Genesect comes in, and that's going to scare Gardevoir out, but it'll be back soon, so I'm going to let this play out as a crit flash cannon nearly knocks out the torn and then a stab terra stab in fact bleak wind storm isn't able to knock it out it sets up a shift gear and picks up kill after kill here using that techno blast and then we get marika gardevoir back out here and it still lives a flash cannon and is able to get the revenge so now it has two kills and in comes great tusk which isn't going to eat a hyper voice so that's three kills in comes Incineroar, gets the Intimidate off, and it lives the Hyper Voice so close, gets its Citrus Berry, but paralyzed. Bummer, bad luck. Hyper Voice gets another kill. Mega Deancey comes back in, and Gardevoir gets its final kill of the game there, cleaning out five of the Pokemon on the other side. What a great performance with a little bit of luck from the Paralysis there. Now we're up to the Stellar League, so we're jumping up into competition a little bit. And our MVP nominee this week is Pins and Needles, the Mega Pincer. And it's actually going up against last week's overall server winner, Bramblegast, here. So let's see what Mega Pincer can do. They go into Weezing, their counter to Mega Pincer, and it sets up a sword stance and hits it with a huge return, doing 54%. Weezing gets off a haze to get rid of that sword stance, reveals its rocky helmet. Weezing goes for a sludge bomb here after another sword stance, and this is enough to knock it out with that second return. Then in comes the Bramblegast here, and it's going to go for Terra Ghost, and there's a quick attack which is going to kill despite it being ghost type because of the Aerialate ability turning that normal attack into a flying type move. So that's two kills now. And in comes Corviknight, which takes a huge crit Stone Edge and kills with Brave Bird, but goes down to the recoil. And with that, Mega Pinsir is able to get three kills and completely turn the tide of this battle. As we move to Victory League, our second highest league, we have Launch the Dragonite as today's nominee. And this is actually really cool. So his opponent has a rain team with Heliper, Arcaladon, Basque Legion and Raging Bolt, all massive parts of a rain team. And so he decides that he can pull a trick here on his opponent by using Special Dragonite, which gets 100% accurate hurricanes in the rain. And so Donphan comes in to try to deal with Dragonite and ends up eating a hurricane for 82%. And then he's going to switch out here to Raging Bolt, fearing that hurricane. And he actually gets crit here for 45%. So in just two turns, Dragonite has done massive damage to two of his opponent's most bulky Pokemon. Later in the match, Dragonite is back in against Raging Bolt, and this time he's able to click Draco and pick up the kill, which gets Dragonite his first kill of the match. And later in the battle, Dragonite's team is down 3 to 4, but he sends out Dragonite to get the revenge here and he goes for a Thunderbolt because this means if he wants to bring in Pelipper to set up the rain, it's going to be punished by the Thunderbolt. So he gets his second kill of the match. Pelipper does come in, but he clicks Thunderbolt into that, and that's three kills for Dragonite. And Basque Legion comes out, and I'm going to pause it right here because it's really important to note that earlier, Grimmsnarl was able to trick this Basque Legion a Lagging Tail, which means now Dragonite will outspeed and kill it with a Thunderbolt as well. And this gets Dragonite its fourth and final kill of the match and allows his team to finish up the rest. And our seventh and final MVP nomination today is Pepperoni the Ogre Pawn. And as you can see, this is a really threatening Sun team we have here with Torkoal to set Sun and Ogre Pawn to click uh, stabbed, Terra boosted, Sun boosted Ivy Cudgels. And so, right away, on turn 4, he gets it in a really good position against Ferrothorn, which is quad weak to fire. And so, he's just gonna go ahead and click Terra, 
and get that plus one attack boost and click the Ivy Cudgel and destroy the Ferrothorn. Then Golem comes out, but we can see here it's Terra Normal already, which is how we know it's actually the Zoroark. So it clicks Hyper Voice, which does a lot, but the Horn Leech is able to kill it entirely and get a lot of that health back. So that's two quick kills already for Ogre Pawn. As we jump ahead a little bit, he's able to get Ogre Pawn back in to Revenge Kill. And it does just that. Horn Leech, even though it's resisted, is able to kill from there and get its health back up to 81%. So that is now three kills. And finally, we have why Ogre Pawn gives me nightmares. It comes in once again to Revenge Kill in a 4v3 situation, so he's looking pretty good already. But this one move right here is why this Mon is so terrifying. It goes for Trailblaze, picks up the kill, and now it's faster than the whole team, and it's just over from here. Play Rough easily takes out the Flygon. Beedrill comes in, has no defense for an Ivy Cudgel, and that is the match. That is six kills for Ogre Pawn and an easy sweep for it here in Premier League. Thank you all so much for watching again. Remember that the poll will be out shortly, so check the description for where to vote, or you can vote on it once it's posted in the Discord as well. We had a lot of votes last week, so make sure you get your votes in so we can see who is going to get the overall server MVP for week two and get an emoji made for them as well. That's all for me, guys. Thanks, and I'll see you next week.